Six reasons CPU cores don't matter anymore. The floodgates were officially open when Intel and AMD brought dual core and quad core CPUs to the mainstream in the early 2000s. Core count became one of the biggest metrics of CPU performance and has remained significant to this day. However, with advances in CPU architecture and denser process nodes, the role of core count isn't as critical anymore. Even the average user today knows that more cores alone don't always mean more performance, other factors like IPC, single core frequency, performance scaling, and efficiency are more important than ever. Modern CPU cores can't exactly be compared to those that came before, since innovations like efficiency cores and 3D vCache have completely changed the game. Even today's entry-level processors leave the highest core count CPUs of the past in the dust. 6. Modern CPUs have plateaued in performance. The days of CPUs offering phenomenal generational gains are firmly in the rearview mirror. If you look at AMD's Zen 5 or Intel's Arrow Lake CPUs, they perform virtually the same as their previous gen counterparts, even slower in the case of Intel. Manufacturers are struggling to extract significant performance uplifts every year. This means that your 6-core CPU from a generation or two prior isn't radically slower compared to the latest 8-core offering from either Intel or AMD. With modern CPUs being powerful enough for almost every type of workload, prioritizing high-core count CPUs is paying fewer dividends than ever before, at least for the majority of users. Whether you are playing the latest demanding games, streaming them online, or dabbling in occasional video editing, you won't ever feel the need for the most powerful CPUs. The fact that a large section of users is still rocking 10-12-year-old CPUs with 4 cores without feeling the need to upgrade should give you a sense of the direction desktop computing has been heading toward in the last decade. Of course, a 14th gen, 8-core processor from Intel is going to be significantly faster than a 9th gen, 4-core model but the perceived difference in performance in the most commonly used applications is not going to be day and night. You can still enjoy your games at playable frame rates as long as you have a decent graphics card to pair your 4-core CPU with. 5. Most applications don't scale with more cores. Another reason not to get bogged down by the number of cores on your CPU is that you don't always get a proportional increase in performance when climbing the core count ladder. Take, for instance, the difference in gaming FPS when moving from a 6-core CPU to an 8-core, 12-core, and 16-core. Once you have a decent 6-core CPU paired with a mid-range GPU, you don't have a lot to gain by upgrading your CPU core count. Besides, unless you are gaming at 1080p, the dependence of your games on the CPU isn't going to be too significant. And even at 1080p, modern games are not programmed to leverage high core count CPUs. The single core frequency and the overall IPC performance are going to play a much larger role in your FPS than the number of CPU cores. For the average user, even many productivity workloads don't require the grunt of 12 core or 16 core CPUs. You can be content with the performance offered by modern 8 core chips unless you are a professional who needs every ounce of performance to save as much time as possible. 4. Performance per watt is a bigger concern than ever. Power consumption might not have been a huge concern for desktop users in the past, but with manufacturers laser focused on increasing CPU frequencies and core counts every generation, the TDPs kept on climbing to the point where it became a legitimate concern. 
More than anything, the metric became another point of comparison when sizing up different CPUs before a purchase. In the last few generations, Intel has been known to struggle with performance per watt compared to AMD's more power-efficient Ryzen CPUs. Intel recognized that relentlessly increasing the power requirements of its CPUs wasn't sustainable, and hence made power efficiency a priority with its latest Arrow Lake CPUs. They now draw much less power compared to the company's 14th Gen Core lineup, but there's still a long way to go before they can compete with AMD on that front. Team Red, on the other hand, further increased its lead by making its Ryzen 9000 CPUs more power efficient than the Ryzen 7000 chips. Stuffing more and more cores on a processor can offer more performance but at the cost of declining power efficiency. Hence, there needs to be a balance between high core counts, an efficient microarchitecture, and innovations like Intel's efficiency cores. When the majority of users don't require insane core counts, the chances of them putting up with the expensive cooling requirements of the same are exceedingly low. For most users, the power bills might not be a deciding factor when choosing a CPU, but they would still like to pick a more power-efficient chip if they are not losing out on performance. 3. Hybrid cores have changed the landscape. With Alder Lake, Intel debuted its hybrid microarchitecture containing performance and efficiency cores the new e-cores were meant to offer extra performance when needed, but help reduce power consumption when not. These new types of cores changed the game, making it impossible to have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison between modern and older CPU cores. For instance, the Core i910900K and Core i512600K have 10 cores each, but the latter has 6 traditional performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, as opposed to 10 traditional cores on the 10th gen model. It makes much more sense to look at the underlying architecture and configuration of the CPU cores than the raw numbers. Due to Intel's shift to a hybrid architecture, it became slightly complicated to compare its processors to AMD's offerings, since Team Red didn't, and still doesn't, have anything resembling Intel's efficiency cores. With Arrow Lake, Intel also removed hyperthreading from its CPUs, significantly reducing the number of threads compared to those on Raptor Lake. This is yet another change that makes it difficult to compare cores across generations. 2. Single Core Frequency and Cache Matter More As I briefly mentioned before, the most commonly used applications don't scale linearly with the number of cores. This is because of the dependence on single core performance rather than the overall core count. In many cases, a CPU with fewer but faster cores can beat another with more cores running significantly slower. The more cores on a CPU, the lower the frequency on every core tends to be. Hence, high core count CPUs might not just be irrelevant for most users, but can even hurt the performance depending on the workload. Besides the single core frequency, the amount of L3 cache on your CPU is a huge determinant of gaming performance. AMD's 3DV cache completely disrupted the gaming CPU market with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and, later, X3D CPUs. Despite having fewer cores than the flagship chips from both AMD and Intel, these X3D CPUs easily became the world's fastest gaming processors. The high-speed L3 cache allowed them to overcome any performance drawbacks linked to the lower core count, and even the slightly slower clock speeds. Both Intel and AMD are working hard to innovate around technologies like stacked cache, higher clock speeds, 
and more power efficiency rather than the number of cores. They have recognized that, beyond a certain point, high core counts aren't going to have a considerable impact on performance, at least not for the majority of users. 1. GPUs do a lot of the heavy lifting now. Multi-core processors handled the parallel processing capabilities required for a lot of workloads in the past. However, many of these workloads have been taken over by GPUs over the years, owing to their superior parallel processing capabilities. High-resolution rendering, encoding and decoding, machine learning and deep learning are some of the intensive workloads that GPUs are more adept at compared to CPUs. Even if you are not a professional or interested in AI workloads or 3D rendering, you are probably dependent on your graphics card more than the CPU when playing demanding games or running other visually intensive programs. This makes the number of cores on your CPU less relevant than ever, since even when an application is CPU dependent, the determining factor becomes the single core performance and other architectural advantages rather than the core count. CPU cores are still an important performance metric, but only when comparing processors from the same generation. The architectural differences from one generation to another make the core count comparison mostly meaningless. Besides, the importance of core count has decreased with modern CPUs hitting a performance ceiling, the heightened focus on power efficiency and innovations like 3 dv cache, and many applications not scaling enough with high core counts.